Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing fantastic. Brett Tadlock here, TN Artist. Um, so today's painting that we're going to work on is going to focus on something I've been mentioning uh, over on Patreon about wanting to do, and that is talking about clipping masks and how to use them and ways for you and kind of the way I do them. Now, I'm just going to show you what I do, and you know you can kind of go from there with your own stuff and experiment, which I highly recommend. And we're going to go with... Uh, not too difficult of a design and painting here because I want to make sure that you have the ability to just kind of play around with this and, and, you know, just make it your own. So what I've got here is my normal eight by 10 canvas at 150 DPI because I can then nano pixel export that up to a large enough size to make prints if I want to. And I have the oil paint set here with a few extra ones that I've added in. Um, like this gray lilac and fields of rye and paint, uh, pale khaki and stuff. Those are actually colors that are supposed to be colors of the year from uh, Sherwin Williams, I believe, or Pantone. And so I added them to my palette just because I, I kind of like them and I use them in some of my personal work. So let's kind of get started with this. I'm thinking of just doing a um, kind of a reflective water running winter kind of thawing scene. So nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, so how am I going to approach this? So there's a couple ways you can do it. Now, in the old way before Rebel had clipping masks, what I would do is I would take the selection tool and the free form and put it on addition or add to selection. And then I would just kind of use it to sort of sketch in where I want my stuff. Okay. And then I would paint in this and, or keep it as a selection or fill it and then paint it. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing because this is how I approach clipping mask. So I'm going to take this and I'm just for right now, I've got this on uh, this black color here, which is literally just bone black. And I'm going to fill that. Okay. So now I have that there. And actually, you know what? I may just go ahead. Well, no, I'll just leave it. Um, so I've got this here. So this is going to be kind of a stream running through it. Okay. And it's just layer one. And then, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer and on this layer, and I'm going to do control D on this layer. I kind of want to have an idea of where I want to put my snow. Okay. So again, I'm going to select the selection tool and I'm just going to kind of throw in just some general like snow melting kind of blobs kind of thing. Okay. So something like that. Now I've still got it on addition. So that way if I end up with a weird cut in like that, I can just select it and make it go back to where I want it. Um, just kind of throw in some additional, just kind of random shapes here. And you know, we've all seen snow melt, so we know it kind of melts in this rounded, kind of feel. Okay. And maybe some up here, maybe some around here. Um, and then some down through here. And I think I'll go with just kind of a random one, something like that. Okay. So now I've got those there. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come up here and just go to this ultramarine blue, click on it. So it's way up here, a highly saturated color. I'm going to come way down here to a more unsaturated, like that. Come and stay in the mid tones. So this area, like right in here, is more of the mids. You have your darks and your lights. So I try to stay in here so I can add more lights and darks. Okay, so I'm going to say OK. I'm going to select my bucket and I'm going to hit that and fill all of those with that. Okay, so now I've got those two layers. Now I'm going to do Control D. All right. So now what I want to do is I know eventually I want to have some like grasses and that kind of stuff. So there's a couple different ways I can do this. Now what I could do here is I could select this one again. Like if I didn't deselect it, I could always do control I like, let me show you. So control Z back to, so I've got my selection again. I'm going to do shift control I 
and I'm going to select the inverse. So now I have all this white area around selected. All right. And I'm going to click on layer one and make a new layer between layer two and layer one. And for this one, uh, let's look at this raw umber, which is more this yellowish color. I'm going to bring it down to kind of this muddy, almost, almost baby poop kind of brownish color. All right, so it's just not the world's greatest color there, but that's fine. I'm going to select that, and I'm going to fill this whole area. Okay, Control D. Now I'm going to click on this. Now I don't know if everybody is doing this or if this is a glitch in mine, but you notice how that just turned to the selection tool right above it. It used to be you had to do Control click, and this changed this, but it's been kind of random for the way it works, so I don't know if it's a glitch or if it's just mine doing it. Anyway, if you're just doing it, just hover over it. If it's not, you don't see that little weird kind of um, shape next to the cursor, then you can just do control click. But I'm going to click on this and select my um, uh, water area that'll be there. And so I'm still on this dirty brown yellowish kind of color and I'm going to hit delete and get rid of that. Control D. Okay. So now I have just basic shapes, right? So I've got these basic shapes here. So I'm going to make a layer above each one of these. Okay. And then now that I've got a layer above each one, I'm going to right click on it and say clipping mask, right click on it, say clipping mask, right click on it, say clipping mask. Okay. So now each one of these layers has its own clipping mask showing for it. Okay. Um, now you can name these if it gets too confusing, but for this part right now, should be fine. Okay. So I've got this water here. We're going to start with that. Now, anything, what we're going to work on is layer four, five, and six. Okay. We're going to ignore other than the shape of layers one, three, and two. Okay. And you're going to see some of the reasons why uh, clipping masks are powerful. But before, like I said, if I was doing this before, I would just keep these shapes and paint and then I would delete and that kind of stuff. So this is a way to do this that's not destructive. That's the main thing for using a clipping mask. It's a non-destructive way of masking out stuff that you want to keep. So I'm just going to go with uh, Thalo Blue here. And I tell you what, just because some people watching this may not have my brushes, I'm going to go over here to this smooth knife. Okay. I'm going to increase it. It's on two by default. So I'm just going to over here just kind of vertical strokes, really light pressure. Okay. Like so. And it's important that you keep these fairly vertical. You might get a few here and there. Whoops. Sorry about that, guys. Let me zoom this out a little bit. So you might get a few that you can use space bar to drag the canvas around. Uh, you might get a few that come off of vertical. Okay, not overly important. You just want them to be mostly vertical. All right. So now I've got that there with the blue. Okay. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab maybe this gold ochre. And from the top, I'm going to streak down just kind of a generic shape. This is just kind of the underpainting. Something like that. Okay. I'm going to increase my brush size and I'm going to push four. So now this is on blending. And this I'm just going to go as straight up and down as I can. Starting from the top, working my way across. Coming back from the bottom, working my way up. Okay. And now I'm going to grab a little bit of this yellow ochre. I'm going to bring my size back down. I'm going to switch to one. And I'm going to add in just a little bit of detail here and there. Just and by detail I mean just brighter spots. Nothing crazy. Now if I want this to be more of like being able to tell what it is, and I'm thinking maybe rocks in the distance. 
I can always uh, add some texture. So I'm just going to grab, you know, like my stone stencil. And we'll just give this kind of a... Let's switch to four. Give that a little bit of texture here and there. So that way we've got some of it. All right, so just add a little bit of texture. You can add as much or as little as you want. Okay. If you do add this here, um, like we can add this and then come back and add some highlights. But this, you don't want it to be too overly textured. I mean, unless if, if you want this water running. If you want this to be water running, then you don't want it overly textured. If you want it to be, you know, just still water like a puddle or something, then you can make it almost a mirror reflection. You still want to distort it a little bit, but for the most part, a mirror reflection. Okay. Backspace to get rid of it. All right, so see, that gives me just a, a hint of texture, hint of stuff going on so that it can be kind of, you know, interpreted to be something. All right. Now, if you really want to play around, if you've got six, you're to the smudge tool and go to liquify. And then you can put in some ripples here and there. And this is one of those things I think you got to be careful with so that you don't overdo it. Less is more. So if you just throw in a few here and there, like so, keep these very uh, as close to horizontal as you can. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just fairly horizontal. Okay, something like that. So now we still have some of the texture, and we have some distorted stuff here and there. So that's going to give us that. Maybe a few up here. All right. So now we've got that there, and we can come back in with our smooth palette knife, take a little bit of the white, bring our space down quite a bit, just throw a few. Oh, helps to actually push one again. A few spots here and there. Depends how much you want it, how many ripples you want. And just some soft white here and there. You can bring it around and push four. I like to go back to four and then just come along horizontally and kind of soften it ever so slightly. I think it gives a nicer look. Okay. So now we've got water contained there. So why do it this way? Well, now let's say, for example, I decided I wanted to move this or change this. Okay. So now I can push T and I can slide this around like so maybe. And I've got a different look. And Oh, look, I've got a little bit of that darker color there now that I like. All right. Push T. So now in a non-destructive way, I was able to move that around and adjust it. That's why you want to use this. Okay. Um, that's what it's for. All right. So I'm going to soften this a little bit. It gives you the opportunity to really bring stuff around and push it around and adjust it. Okay. So that's why we use clipping mask because it's a non-destructive way to mask something off and then be able to adjust it later if we decide we wanted to. All right. So now I can come up here and let's go up here to the snow and change this to here. Now I'm going to grab, I don't want bright, bright white. Okay. So I'm going to grab down towards this bluish color and a little bit lower, a little bit more blue. Something like this. I can just 
lightly bring it in. Now, the other thing with clipping mask is, is that this color that's here can affect the color that's here. So in other words, I'm painting, I've got this underpainting here. So like if I left this white, I could leave these shapes white and then just paint around, you know, and do it all, uh, you know, totally up to, to how you want to do it. But you can, you can use the clipping mask paint layer to kind of give you some color to play around with. This really works really well for the watercolor stuff where you're keeping more of a transparent. But now I can quickly come in here and throw in some color and not worry about painting outside of it. Just like so. All right, let's go to grainy for the knife here. I want to have a little bit of texture like some ice crystals. Something like that. I'm going to go to four. And I'm going to soften this. See, I can really smear this around, get that look that I want. And by smearing it around, it's going to be outside of this edge. So that way, again, if I want to move it like I did these, I can move it around and maybe I get a different look and feel to it. Okay. So look at this area right here. See where that little jagged line is there that I missed? So I'm going to right click and drag this down. Then I'm going to roll and zoom in. So here's the other thing that you can do with this, that this is the whole point as well. It's going to click on this layer. Now I can come over here and let's grab my brush. I'm going to select this purplish color and I'm going to paint more of a shape. And this is going to allow me to expose more of what's in that clipping mask. So Okay, so in other words, I can adjust the lay, the way these look. This works great if you're doing like um, uh, like a stone wall or something like that, where you've got texture behind it. And you're like, oh, I want to put another stone here. So that way, you've painted your texture or you've imported a texture. I've done this before, where I've brought in gold. Uh, I have like a gold texture, and if you've seen my red barn, that gold texture, I believe, is with that post on Patreon. Um, and I can mask off the area and then draw and have a gold line that draws in. So it works great if you're doing like, um, I've done some digital illuminations type work uh, and calligraphy type stuff. And it's a great way to have a, a metallic ink that um, works really well. So something to try. All right, but see how I can kind of play around with this shape. And now what I'm seeing is, is more of what was painted underneath it. So I'm keeping that texture. I haven't lost any of it. Let's go to the opposite. Let's hit five on here so this becomes an eraser. I don't want some of this stuff. Now I'm erasing the purplish color, but you see how up here it's also, it can change around some of the different stuff. Okay, so you can really mix and play and match it around. So different things to do it, but I'm going to go back up here to my, oops, back up here to my top layer. And I'll switch to, I'll just kind of throw in some color at the period and bring it back to, so I want to keep some of these textures. Like I said, I want this to be more of a grainy type ice. Making it four, kind of soften this a little bit. Kind of soften it a little bit. All right, so that's good for now. Then come down here to this layer, and I just want to kind of throw in some splotches of color just to kind of maybe represent where there's some. Um, dead grass and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go with like Van Dyke Brown. Go a little bit darker. As you can see, this is kind of an orangey brown. And Actually, I said I wasn't going to use mine. Just in case somebody else wanted to do it. I'll go with the grunge. Maybe a little of the 
bone black in it. So that'll give me that really kind of rough fill underneath it. Now I can come up here and add a new layer on top of all these. Uh, let's just go to this burnt sienna. And yeah, I guess we can leave it there for now. I'm going to come over to the pen tool. Um, bring the water down. Let's see how this looks. And then I can just streak in some grass. So it just looks like old dead grass. Here. This is one of those things where you just kind of get your motor running and just kind of do this C stroke. And just kind of randomly go around hitting some of these. Okay. And if you don't, yeah, I wouldn't recommend filling up every little bit of this with these because it's going to get a little busy. Um, so just adding some here and there can give you some of that feel and look of it. And then you can come back. Let's jump down here. And we can add in a few... streaks here and there and this is stuff that would just um, kind of adds to the texture behind it but without you feeling like there's a lot of uh, busyness now this is the one thing I thought they had fixed this so see how I hit alt I should be able to pick up this color but for whatever reason on clipping mask it's not doing it it's picking up the empty canvas okay so i have to come back up here and select i'm not sure why um it it didn't do it for a while and now it started doing it again so again maybe it's mine maybe i need to double check that i haven't missed an update it's frustrating oops picture itself. Now it's like I should be picking up that dark brown, but it's not. All I'm doing here is just kind of streaking in some colors and then just kind of laying it back down. And the, honestly, some of these little glitches is why I haven't done this yet as far as this kind of a how to use clipping mask kind of thing. All right, so I'm back up here on the top layer. I'm going to push four. I'm going to bring this down and I'm just going to lightly kind of soften some of these bottom ones. Like so. Five and kind of erase some of this too. I like that big sponge mark. All right, so now we've got a few of these grasses. We got some of that stuff. I can come over here and select this. Come back in here, bring down the kind of soften it. So if there's a few that I want to put in that are more sticking out. I can kind of do that here and there. But 
you want to have a couple of values here and there of the grasses, even if this was green or if this was brown, like it is. You want to have some lighter ones and some dark ones. The lighter ones will kind of pull forward a little bit here and there. Okay. And then just kind of go back in on four and kind of soften some of the bottoms of some of these. Don't have to get crazy with it, just a little bit here and there. So it kind of blends in a little more. Like so. Okay, so now I've got just some uh, spaces here that have, you know, colors and some leaves and I mean some grasses and some uh, textures and stuff. And so then I can come back into these. Keep doing that. Now I can go to more of my like this off bluish color, which just in case you're wanting to use this, there's the hex code. Okay. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take, uh, we'll go with the smooth knife, kind of soften in. Now if I wanted to, I could come in here, like if I think, say for example, I've got this kind of how I like it, okay? And I've got my colors kind of laid in here, and, and I'm like, yeah, this is pretty good, and I'm kind of hitting that point of where I'm like, all right, I'm ready to, to start kind of frosting the cake and putting final details and that kind of stuff. And obviously this is not, you know, I'm not going for a finished painting here. I'm just trying to show you guys some techniques. But let's say I'm going, you know, I've got this to the point where I'm like, okay, it's looking kind of good. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to hit four and I'm going to soften some of this. Kind of blend it back and make some snow. Just kind of keep some of the textures that I put in there, lose some of them. But then I'll say, all right, I'm done with that. So I'm going to make a layer on top of this. And then this is where I can kind of come in and put it on one and just kind of refine. Now I could do that with the clipping mask, but I kind of like doing it this way instead. So you make your choice, however you want to do it. This is just my preferred method. And that's kind of my whole goal with everything I'm teaching, is not to get you to paint what I paint exactly, but show you how to do some stuff so that way you can then take it and make it your own. You know, hopefully build off of what I'm teaching you. Because there's nothing cooler to me than having students like, you know, Patreon or, or YouTube or Facebook or whatever that have done some of my stuff. And then they say, hey, take a look at what I did here. You know, this is where I took what you taught me and I started painting my own stuff. You know, I still take lessons from people. I grew up watching stuff like Bob Ross, Bill Alexander, Jerry Arnell, you know, all those PBS painters. Uh, there was a couple others, too. I just can't think of their names at the moment, but, you know, grew up watching them and learned from them. And then now I do my own thing. And there's still people that I do that from now. There's like Hardy Fowler and, and several others um, that I learned from. I still take classes. I still try to learn more. I still read books. I still do stuff. And that's why I recommend it. But that's my whole goal is to hopefully get you where you're making your own kind of stuff you know and then you come back and you say hey man I started doing this because you inspired me to do it and uh, this is the kind of stuff I made there is nothing cooler than that not because it's an ego thing but because I help somebody else be creative just to make that clear it's not because of ego I don't I don't mean that it's cool to see that because like oh I'm such a great teacher I know I'm not there's probably teachers out there that are way better than me but hopefully people get something from the passion that I have for doing it and they make stuff. So seeing somebody else create is what's cool is what I mean by, you know, that's the coolest thing ever 
is just seeing that somebody got inspired and made stuff. You know, and so that's what I mean. Anyway, hope that makes sense. I'm just going to throw in a little bit of other snow here. And just kind of give you an idea of how much you can kind of play around with this. Here, and I'm going to grab some of that titanium white just on some of these edges, kind of like if you're doing clouds. I'm going to throw in a little bit of white back and soften it and get rid of the stark white. And four. We come back over this. All I'm doing is blending this in so it's not such a stark contrast of jumping from one to the other. Five, get rid of that. Soften that. Okay, so that's kind of giving you the idea of how you can use these to start out building the texture and the colors and then gives you more freedom to push around. And then, you know, from there, it's just a matter of you know, going in and refining stuff. And whoops. Still doing it. I don't know why. Shouldn't be doing it at all under that layer. So yeah, we need to check, see if there's an update. So what I'm doing here is just going and adding this a little bit darker color there to give more of a shoreline. Just want to soften that into the a little bit. So just one little last thing here to kind of play around with just because turn off it's up here. I'm going to come down here. Make a new layer. Darker brush. Just kind of throw some of these in here. They'll be very subtle. Come a little bit. Lighter. Like that. Could even go from here to a little bit more blue. Just add a little bit of blue to it. That's just going to kind of fill in some of the texture for some of that here and there. So again, get as crazy as you want with it or just however you want. T. Just bring that around. angle these so it kind of matches that. So something like that. Okay, so you can sit here and play with this and mess around with it as much as you want to, but I just wanted to give you just a really quick painting to show you kind of some ideas and some thoughts on how to use masking 
you know, the um, layer mask for this. Okay. So the key things, create your layers, create your shapes, right click on it, check clipping mask, it'll add it to it. Now you can do just one thing I didn't show you yet. Let's say I wanted to bring this one down in, in line with this one. I can just go to here and see now it becomes, all of it goes to this one. Okay, so you can stack clipping masks, but I don't want to do that. So, um, yeah, so you're going to make the layer, make a layer above it, right click it, clipping mask it to the layer below it, paint in your shapes, your colors, and move it all around if you want to, uh, and then really just kind of keep building one on top of another, all right? Um, I like to use them as laying in the foundations and the base for everything, so that way I can get a really good feel for the textures. It's a good way to do it non-destructive, so that way you can really mess around with things and, and kind of get a good feel for it all. All right, so hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you have questions about any of it, like normal, make sure to leave me uh, any sort of questions uh, comments or questions especially if you're on patreon all you got to do is just ask there and more than happy to help all that i'll help on the other channels too but uh do a little bit more there with patrons because that's the point of them being a patron is to get that specialized help i just want to add some water ripples here And get kind of a, a feel for it. Now I can soften some of this back. Anyway, I was going to select the the where I have the grass. Oh yeah, I have the grass on the other top. Boom. So I can come here in case I have any of these that are kind of affected, but they shouldn't be. So, okay. I just wanted to double check without zooming in for every little thing. Anyway, I hope this was helpful and I hope it gives you an idea of how to use clipping masks. They're really not hard. Um, the only fun thing I find hard about it is that, like I said, Rebel can be a little glitchy here and there, but I need to double check that there's an update. I did tell them about it before it was fixed. Seems to be doing it again. Uh, but it's nothing major. It's just a small little bug. Um, but the main thing is, is just use it to play around with the shapes, get the looks that you want and the feel, and then you can mess around with it more. And, and like I said, in a non-destructive manner. And if you don't know what I mean by that, it's like if you're deleting something, that's destructive. You're cutting away from it. You're destroying those pixels. So non-destructive means you're adding to it or, or changing it without affecting the main part of it. So anyway, I'm babbling. <laughs> thanks for watching i hope you got something out of it leave me any questions comments suggestions or anything else thanks for being here thanks for being a supporter have an awesome day